Hello, I'm Groza Notes, and if you're watching this tutorial, it probably means that you subscribe to my website, which is Love Into Blender. So first, I want to thank you for subscribing uh, to my website, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to create this scene in here, this outdoor scene, which is a very cool uh, sunrise. Uh, I like sunrises, so I decided to model one. All right, so thank you for subscribing again and let's get started. I have in here just the default blender scene. I'm going to delete the default cube and lamp. And first I'm going to switch to cycles render. We're going to use cycles for this uh, video as well as pretty much all of my videos. I uh, use cycles for most of my Creations. Okay, so let's add a plane in here. I'm gonna scale this up to something like this. Then press one, Control Alt zero, and take that camera up. Okay, we can bring it a little bit to the front, about there, and I think. Alright, so this should do it. This position of the cam camera. Okay, so this plane is going to be our water. And now for the background, we're gonna use an image uh, which I've took from uh, goodwp.com, a pretty cool website. You can download this image for free on different resolutions. And I've took that image. Uh, which is this one and I've took it in Photoshop and delete half of it so I've cropped uh, the first uh, the top half so we only have the sky in there and I'm gonna use the sky for the uh, background as a background okay so I'm gonna import that using a, a an add-on uh, import export so just enable import images as planes and then you can add images as planes. I'm gonna locate that image uh, in here. Uh, so this one, I'm gonna import this, scale it, rotate this along Z. Okay, so I'm gonna go into edit mode and I'm gonna take this up long Z almost about there maybe we can uh, snap this to vertex and grab it the long Z hold on control and we snap that so uh, this should be on that plane all right now I'm gonna take this back almost till the end not quite all right and we need to scale this up and this should do it all right so that fits in there now we have the water we have the background uh, what's left modeling is the uh, mountains as you can see in here we've got some mountains uh, so it's not so empty in the image is not so empty all right so uh, those mountains are pretty easily to model. We have an add-on for that, which is right here at mesh, is the ant landscape. So enable that. And then you can add mesh and landscape. All right, so as you can see, we just added that and it's uh, already almost done. It's a really quick add-on. All right, I'm gonna just lower this lever to negative 0.3 so that that will be uh, below the C level and pretty much that's what I'm gonna do with it also smooth shading if it's not already smooth and I'm gonna place this in here on the left side scale it up a little bit and I'm gonna rotate this along Z plus you say 90 degrees yeah or even 
90 degrees again so 180 degrees and that should do it then I'm gonna duplicate this and bring it to the right side and as you can see they don't look the same because of the rotation so this is a little bit higher than this which is okay and I think that should do it all right now pretty much uh, I guess we're done with the modeling and we want some light source in here so I'm gonna split this window into bring up the node editor and I have this background plane selected I'm gonna go to materials and instead of the diffuse shader that we have in here I'm gonna add an emission shader gonna delete this and leave the strength at one so that plane should look uh, should look just fine by itself so we don't need any light source for it okay as you can see that looks awesome already right, now back to solid now before I go to the materials I need this uh, I need some modifiers to this plane so it should actually look like a water so I'm gonna go to the displacement first I'm gonna add a subdivision surface modifier I'm gonna raise the render to 3 view to 2 so it won't slow down so much my computer then I'm gonna go into edit mode and subdivide this and as you say 4 times or maybe even 5 times as you please Great, now we need another modifier which is a displace modifier all right and for this displacement we're going to use an image texture so i'm going to switch to blender render to create that texture image or movie open and this is going to be an image i've got from cgtextures.com water plane this one uh, the uh, 0008 or something like that i'm gonna leave the site the website below so you can download this image oh and one thing uh, the image from the background yeah i think i said i took it from here yeah i think i told you anyway i'm gonna leave the link below so, so you can download all the images that i use in this tutorial okay now back to cycles modifiers and i'm gonna use that texture which perhaps we could have named it okay the strength is way too high so maybe point uh, zero zero three also check smooth shading and maybe one point zero zero five yeah well i guess that depends on what you want you can just raise that at a later time if you think it's too much or it's too less you can play around with that all right so maybe point one should do it all right pretty much the modeling is done now we're gonna add the materials the materials for this mountains in here is gonna be just a quick and easy one we don't need much of complex uh, shaders for that because it's far from the camera and you can't actually see it so i'm using a diffuse with a glossy shader diffuse should be something something like a brown color i guess something like this okay let's check the preview and just lower this so we don't have so much peculiarity so much glossiness in there 
Okay, maybe in one point five. Yeah, that should do it. I'm gonna select this one. Make sure the last one is the selected is the one with the modifier and link materials. So they have the same material. You can go to textures or materials. Yeah, materials. So we see how that looks. All right, now to the water material. I'm gonna add a new material for it, and this is uh, this is as well just a simple material. Is yeah, it's a pretty simple material. I'm gonna add a glossy glossy shader, and for that I'm gonna use a normal map. Uh, so add image texture and we gonna open an image I've got from CG textures as well which is this water plane and I've took it in uh, crazy bump and created this normal map or you can just use Photoshop to create a normal map and open that image so we use it as a normal map Alright, then make sure you select non color data because the normal map is uh, non color data, so we have to check that so it would work. And we're gonna add the normal map, of course. Alright, the roughness is too high, so I'm gonna take that down to point, uh, I say point. O1 I should do it shouldn't it yeah point o one all right so let's just check this and see what we've done in here all right so we just need to yeah it's either two things. I think the strength is way too high. Zero, zero, one. All right. Yeah, we need to UV unwrap this. So I'm gonna go to seven tab into edit mode and U project from view. So just UV unwrap that. And let's see. All right. So that that's fixed now. Great, now the strength is too low, so 0.1, let's just say 0.5, okay, this is, this is just too much, maybe 0.08. And you can play around with this option in here as well as with the displacement till you get a nice looking result result right so maybe we need to lower this to 0.005 let's wait in to render yes that should uh, in fact this is not so uh, this is a little bit deceptive because it's not how the final render will look because we have in here two and for the render is three subdivisions so just gonna go to solid and just check three. So this will have more details than if it would be two in there. So if it has if it has more details, you don't need to raise this so much. Okay, so if you like that. 
but maybe I can lower that to 0.3 and just waiting right now waiting and this looks a lot better but still we have some black spots in here which might be the reflection of those mountains but just gonna lower this to point, point oh 0.075 and I think that is just right so we have some reflection in there okay now just another thing I'm gonna, I'm gonna add in here is an UV sphere check smooth and this will be our sun I'm gonna take this in here because as you can see in the Im in the background image we already have a sun but we need a little bit more reflect reflectiveness on the water so we're gonna add this uh, sphere and use the layers in here to just use this sphere as a reflection and it's not gonna actually render you can't see it in the final render that down and so just I'm gonna place it where the sun is in the background over it and maybe just get it up a little and that should do it all right now I'm gonna add the material for this as well which is gonna be an emission an emission shader with the strength of to also give it a yellowish color because the sun in the morning is yellow and check if the reflection looks all right okay so that's the reflection we get pretty nice yeah it's looking it's looking okay so I'm gonna leave it as that and in order to uh, use it uh, use only the reflection and not see the sphere we need to take this to a different layer so I'm gonna move it to the second layer so on the second la layer we only have the sphere uh, which is the Sun and on the first layer we have all the other objects and we're gonna uh, come up to this panel which is render layer we're gonna name this scene and this scene will render all the layers except uh, the second one the layer where the Sun is which is of course the second one so disable that and then we're gonna create another render layer which we're gonna name Sun for example and this would only uh, render the layer where the sun is which is the second one okay so I think we are actually done yeah aren't we yeah I think we're done okay so before we hit render we need uh, some option to change some option in here so first I'm just gonna add one more thing which is a little bit of uh, depth of field so I'm gonna centre this camera uh, to about here where the sun is let's just say and choose f-stop put there 4 so just a little bit of that depth of field and an option you need to check in here is transparency so go to where is it uh, film and check transparent if it's not checked already okay so check transparent because the background uh, the background is going to be used for the second layer 
where the sun is uh, and we don't actually need it so we just check transparent background all right so i'm gonna choose a hundred samples for my render and i'm gonna pre press f12 and i will pause this and come back with the final render okay so this is the render that we've, we've got and we're gonna go into the compositor and finish this and make it look really nice okay so in here we have the node editor switch to the compositor check use nodes and backdrop all right you shouldn't have that but yeah anyway i'm gonna add in here an output viewer so we can see at any step what we are doing okay so let's get started first thing on a dual is i want to add just a little bit of blur to that sun so i'm going to duplicate this slender layer and select the sun layer take that in there and i'm going to add the blur okay switch that to fast gaussian relative and let's just say 10 with 10 should do it all right so that's this blur sun we need to combine that to the uh, layer the scene layer in here and we're gonna use a mix node to do that okay and to make it just a little bit uh, more interesting I will I will use a uh, soft light in here and which as you can see this makes a pretty uh, warm pretty warm colors in here uh, so yeah value of point one yeah, one will just do it because we're gonna use some more mix and multiply nodes and it would uh, not be so noticeable after we use them all right so uh, let's see what we need to do next uh, we're gonna add a vignette effect to this so for that we're gonna use an ellipse mask uh, which is a really really useful uh, node okay just trying to find it right now okay mate ellipse mask all right change the width and height so they would fit the uh, the render the rendered image 56 fine yeah that should be all right then again another blur and Fast Gaussian, take this in here. Gonna put that in the render so we can see what we're doing. Okay, now we need to combine these two again. So another mix node in here with this one. And I'm gonna change this to B multiply okay so that is too much 10 is not enough so let's just see 40 20 with uh, x aspect correction and yeah for the moment it's all right uh, we're gonna use some other nodes and uh, it won't be so black in the corners all right now we're gonna start from here again i'm gonna use an uh, just a second so i can find it i haven't actually used this many times 
So I just need to find it right now. Oh, come on, where is it? Um, okay, so I'm having a little bit of trouble finding it. Come on, where are you? Oh, here it is, map value. Okay, <laughs> finally found it. And I'm gonna take the Z from this render layer, put it in there. I'm gonna use another mix node. And I'm gonna combine this with the render layer. Which found out that it, uh, it come up, comes up with a really cool result, really nice looking result. So I'm just gonna <coughs> do that. Also bring a viewer so you can see what we're doing. And this, using this we're gonna brighten up the image just a little bit and uh, we have in here, oh, let's just see, mix one. Yeah, I think that should do it. Uh, or maybe, maybe multiply to bright that up. Okay, so this is just too much. So the size should be maybe point one. Also, we're gonna use a minimum of point one and a maximum of uh, two. two. Okay, so that brightens up the uh, the image and um, where it is far far away from the camera. So in here you don't see very much light it doesn't lighten up that much only the image on the distance okay and then we have this one with this one which we also need to combine so another mix node for that Right, so this one, let's check our viewer, alright, it's quite black, and maybe 0.5, alright, that, I think that looks nice, that should be alright. Great, let's go, let's go further and we want to add filter and uh, where is it, yeah, distort lens distortion, okay, another effect. And I'm gonna check fit in here, distort maybe 0.01 or don't check fit so you can see how much this affects. So 0.01 uh, should do it, 0.1 in here, uh, maybe that's too much, 0.05. Yeah, point of 0.5 in here and point of 0.1 in there. And now check fit. That's a little bit of lens distortion, makes it look uh, better. And then I just use a color balance node and I think we are pretty much done in here. It should be nice okay so you can see this dispersion right there on the mountains if you think that's too much just lower that 0.03 maybe because we're using professional cameras and we don't want that okay so 
Well, that's a little bit better. All right, now I'm just gonna make this a little bit yellowish. These are the mid tones. Just a little bit more yellowish. Okay. The highlights as well. Okay, maybe bring those up just a little bit. And the uh, shadows. So everything looks yellow. You could lower the shadow so it's a uh, dark morning or just raise those shadows but I think if lower that that actually looks more interesting okay so this is it this should actually do it make sure you grab this and put it in a composite node to actually have it in the final photo and I think we're done yeah this is the node setup for our compositor and this is our final render okay so just as a final note I'm gonna press F3 just gonna check desktop and final render yeah final render PNG and I want to show you the difference so I'm just gonna grab this and put it right into the compositor composite node sorry and F3 final render no compositor oh that press cancelled I just cancel that <laughs> no compositor save and so you can see the difference between uh, actually it's after and before the compositor so this is our image no compositor and this is the image with the compositor and as you can see the compositor is a pretty powerful tool and it can make your picture look a lot more interesting and a lot more eye-catching but yeah this tutorial wasn't about showing uh, what compositor can do but you can improve a lot your image by using the compositor so this is our final render i hope you like it i hope you enjoyed my tutorial and thank you for subscribing again and have a good day